Every time you attack and suppress the vote, that's violence. That's social violence. That's psychological violence. That's political violence. And it's time to stop the violence. I fundamentally believe that African Americans were gravely disadvantaged throughout the bulk of American history. I do not believe they are gravely disadvantaged today. There is racism in modern America. There is homophobia in modern America. There's anti-Semitism in modern America. The question is, what should government do about that? The President of the United States. The vote is the most powerful instrument ever devised by man for breaking down injustice and destroying the terrible walls which imprison men because they're different from other men. Today, what the is Voting the Rights Act of 1965 is widely regarded as the most important piece of civil rights legislation ever passed. And it was meant to end the problem of voting discrimination in the South. It struck down things like poll taxes and literacy tests that had prevented African Americans from registering to vote for many, many years. The most powerful part of the Voting Rights Act was that under Section 5, those states with the longest histories of voting discrimination had to approve their voting changes with the federal government to make sure they did not discriminate in the future. Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act was the most effective civil rights provision in our history. It was the thing that changed the game for black and Latino Native American voters across the country. By 2005, uh, the registration rate of black voters was on par with, and in many states, exceeded that of white voters. The turnout rate of black voters was often on par with white voters and exceeded that. There was no longer any kind of the systematic statewide discrimination that had caused Section 5 to be a necessary requirement. Section 5 did its job. We'll hear argument first this morning in case 1296, Shelby County versus Holder. I think the problem to which it, the Voting Rights Act was addressed is solved. You look at the registration, you look at the voting, that problem is solved on an absolute as well as a relative basis. So the reason Section 5 was created was because states were moving faster than litigation permitted to catch the new forms of discriminatory practices that were being developed. As the court struck down one form, the states would find another. There's no question that we've made progress as, as a nation, but progress is not a destination. The election of Barack Obama represented many things. One of the things it turns out that it represented was the biggest push to turn back voter access since the Jim Crow period. When minorities became the majority in Texas, that's when Republicans really began pushing for voter ID there. African Americans and Hispanics are two to three times more likely to not have a government-issued ID as white voters. The Texas voter ID law went through the Section 5 process to have the district court decide whether it was racially discriminatory. And the federal district court said it was and blocked the implementation of the voter ID law. And so if you're mad about our elected leadership and how they're handling the people's business, you better raise your voice and vote your dreams. It doesn't take much. So if you can get just 1% or half a percent of people to not be able to vote or, or just not to show up, um, then you can win elections. Once you have an election, it's over. Because once the election is over, people are governing, people are moving on. So in voting, it's a critical feature to be able to stop racially discriminatory voting changes from being implemented in the first place.
I thought that there is a basis for the court to simply uphold the Voting Rights Act. The majority of the people in both the Civil Rights Division and the Solicitor General's office were, had, had a different view, that the court had taken the case with a purpose. Even the name of it is wonderful, the Voting Rights Act. Who is going to vote against that in the future? Whenever a society adopts racial entitlements, it is very difficult to get out of them through the normal political processes. There could be no more ahistoric articulation of what the Voting Rights Act is uh, than that characterization. For a person to say that race is not a salient factor in American life today, you can only say that from one of two positions. One is a position of privilege, or, or the other is a position of ignorance. Gerald Ford, Ronald Reagan, George W. Bush, all signed reauthorizations of the Voting Rights Act. And so for a long time, the Voting Rights Act was not about partisan politics. It was about the American promise. I have the opinion of the court this morning in case 1296, Shelby County versus Holder. When that opinion came down, it was, it was a very gratifying moment. Your race and your ethnicity should not be something that's used to help you in life or to harm you in life. That is, that is what the vast majority of Americans believe. Then an hour of the Shelby County decision, Texas Attorney General Greg Abbott tweets that its state's voter ID law, which had been blocked under the Voting Rights Act, should go into effect. Now, a federal court has said it's racially discriminatory, but the provision of the law they used, poof, they implement the racially discriminatory law. A month after the Shelby County decision, North Carolina passes a sweeping rewrite of its election system. The state cuts back on early voting, it requires strict ID, it eliminates same-day voter registration, it eliminates pre-registration for 16 and 17-year-olds, they even eliminate Citizens Awareness Month which is meant to encourage people to register to vote. As soon as there's not a racial discrimination check on the statute, they decide to pass a bill that includes tons of provisions that they themselves had negotiated away because they were concerned they wouldn't pass the Section 5 test. Today's decision apparently clears the way for several high-profile laws, including stricter voter ID requirements in Alabama, Mississippi, and Texas that drew objections. I never thought that I would see the day when the United States Supreme Court would put a dagger in the heart of the Voting Rights Act of 1965. This is going to be the first presidential election in 50 years without the full protections of the Voting Rights Act. If the states that were covered by Section 5 make changes to their election procedures that harm minorities. Voters can come together, form a plaintiff group, hire attorneys, and challenge that. That is how our legal system works. These lawsuits are very expensive, and the burden of proof is on those facing discrimination as opposed to the states that are doing the discriminating. And laws can only be challenged once they've been passed. So you're now faced with a situation where voters are facing discrimination and then laws are being challenged. And if people are trying to take your right, you must be powerful because nobody would go to all this trouble. Nobody would go to the Supreme Court. Nobody would vote like this. Nobody would pass voter suppression law if they thought you were weak.